Well, I might be like you where I get really overwhelmed by projects that are big. So storage areas like our basement or maybe it's your garage or attic, I just keep putting it off because it just feels kind of overwhelming to me. But the only good thing about these big storage spaces is that they can also be the source of a really big win. And so today I wanna to share with you three tips so that you can quickly and easily simplify your storage space. from The Minimal Mom and if we haven't met before I am married to Tom and we have four kids ages four through nine and so I like sharing tips and tricks for how you can simplify your house quickly especially if you're a messy or an unorganized person like me so let's band together and <laughs> tackle some big storage spaces today we live in Minnesota and the good thing about Minnesota is most of the houses have basements here which is a great storage space our house was built in the early 40s and so our basement is not finished it's not pretty and it's been getting what recently okay so I will show you what our basement actually looks like right now and how it's getting wet and everything it's uh, not a glamorous <laughs> space so this was some stuff that we already moved away from the walls where it was getting wet we have like our workout area over there a bow flex we've never set up yet this is where Tom just keeps tools and stuff for remodeling and then that's where our sump pump is. One of them. There's another one, if we go back over here, in that corner too. And so you can see where it's been getting wet. This isn't so bad. It was worse than this earlier. Uh, we do know about mold and water. My brother actually worked for quite a while doing water restoration, so we got to use some of his equipment. So we have a commercial size dehumidifier and fans and an air purifier down there, so health-wise, we've got it covered. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and this is our shelves that are just all haphazard right now and what I need to work on. Down the road, we'll address the whole water in the basement issue, but it just hasn't been a priority yet. So the things that we do keep down there are our seasonal clothing, so winter hats, mittens, boots, and also holiday decorations, and then stuff that we use to stage houses for real estate. So those are kind of the main categories of stuff that was down there. So, I mean, the nice part is when everything's organized, these shelves over here are more than enough to store everything, it's just that we had been not good, we had been busy, so we weren't doing a good job of getting everything back in their bins. We had switched out the kids' stuff, like the seasonal snow boots and snow pants and all that stuff without putting it back properly. We were working on projects, like finishing the kitchen, and that stuff was all down here, and so it just hadn't gotten any attention lately. The good thing is, I know because we have simplified so much that it can all get put back together really quickly, it's just literally taking the time to do it. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. And so the three tips that I wanna go over today to simplify your storage space quickly are these. The first one is to realize that there is a cost to storing stuff. The second thing has to do with deferred decision making, and we've talked about this quite a bit, but do I want to have to handle this item again? And then the third thing is remembering how easy it is to replace stuff. For this project, I decided that I actually wanted to bring everything upstairs because I wanted to be very intentional about what I was putting back downstairs on the shelves. And so I decided that everything needs to fit on the shelves that we have down there. And so that's kind of my parameter. And I like setting these guidelines because I feel like I'm tougher than when I'm editing and when I'm going through this stuff. And I get rid of more stuff if I'm thinking in my head, okay, it all has to fit back on these shelves. Okay, so here it is, the contents of our basement in our living room. So hopefully Tom doesn't walk in right now because if he does, he would feel totally overwhelmed by this. I feel a little bit overwhelmed as well. So now I'm gonna get started going through things, I'm gonna try and get rid of as much of this stuff as possible so that we don't have to store it anymore because this is a huge headache and not what I wanna be spending my time on. You know, we can have all this stuff, but if it's causing us stress, it's not an asset. It's not bringing any value, any joy, any happiness <laughs> to our life right now. Just stress and there's other things I could have been doing today. So. Now I'm just gonna start sorting through all this, see how much we can get rid of. So tip number one is realizing that there is a cost to storing stuff 
even if we have the room to store it. So it was actually kind of a good thing when our basement got wet because it caused me to reevaluate everything that I was storing down there. For one, there was stuff on the floor that hadn't got put away that actually got ruined because it was on the floor. It got moldy and I just wasn't gonna take the time to clean it. And so there was stuff that got ruined that somebody else could have used. And there was stuff that I had just been hanging on to, wondering if we were gonna use it or not, that I probably didn't need. But where the cost came in was that when stuff got wet and when it got musty down there, everything started to smell a little bit moldy. And so I ended up having to rewash all of the linens that were stored down there. And so you maybe experienced this, maybe if you've had like a pipe burst or you've had rodents or insects or all the various types of things that can get into our stuff when we're storing it. And so my encouragement and what I'm learning is that it's better to give this stuff away or to sell it and let somebody use it who is actually gonna use it than for it to deteriorate in storage. And then the second thing we've talked about a little bit before is this idea of deferred decision making. Do I want to have to handle this item another time? Do I want to have to pick it up and look at it again and go back and forth whether or not I should keep it? And so deferred decision making is huge. If we can just flex this muscle, build up this muscle to make these decisions now, it's going to make our house less full of stuff and it's going to make our life easier down the road. Okay, it's at this point where everything looks worse looks like I've made no progress. I really hope Tom doesn't come in right now because he'll be like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I think uh, what I need to do is start moving out some of the stuff that I'm deciding to get rid of and kind of clear up some space and then I will feel like I've made progress and it'll just, it'll all feel better. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna work on that. And then the last tip is remembering how easy it is to replace this stuff. You know, a lot of times when we go to simplify and declutter and clear things out, we all of a sudden go into this like scarcity mindset of like, oh my goodness, but what if all of the stores and Amazon and garage sales and other people's houses, what if they run out of stuff and what if I can never get a good deal again? And everything in that basement was something I got a good deal on. Like I'm, I'm super frugal, right? And so it was all secondhand from garage sales, from a thrift store, or something someone gave to me. I mean, it, it was all stuff that I acquired very inexpensively, but then when it comes to clearing it out, all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, oh, it has so much value. It doesn't, <laughs> right? Like I found this pillow at a garage sale for a quarter and it's like, it's really nice looking. It's really plush. I thought either I could use it how it is or I could recover it or I could use the stuffing in it for, you know, another pillow, a quarter, you can't pass it up, right? And so now here I am having to decide if I should keep it or not. I had said earlier that if I haven't used it in the past year, I'm just gonna get rid of it. But then I get caught up on something like this of, oh, but should I you know, keep this? And what I need to remind myself is that there will be more pillows for a quarter at a garage sale. This isn't the only one out there. It has never been easier in the history of the world <laughs> to replace stuff. And, and so I just have to remind myself that even after I get rid of stuff, I'll still be able to find good deals if I need to replace some of this. And I know, I'm like you, I don't want to have to rebuy something I already have, but the chances are if you haven't been using it, you're just not gonna need it in the future, or if you did need to replace it, you'll be more creative. I borrow things so much more than I ever used to, or I just get by without them. And so I'm guessing that'll be your experience too. All right, so here is all of the stuff that we are gonna donate and get rid of. But this is the really fun part. These containers are all empty now. So that is, there's even some big ones back here. So that feels really good. A lot of them weren't like full, full, but just to have those empty. And then here are the ones that we're gonna put back down in the basement. So this feels awesome to have it simplified to just these bins. I also made some cute tags for them just because that's fun for me. So I made them in Canva and I printed those out. I'm gonna put all the labels on and then get them back downstairs on the shelves and I will show you the final product. All right, doesn't this look so much better? <laughs> and so here are the shelves again, and like I said, everything just needed to fit on them. That was kind of my parameter that I put in place for myself. And so now all these totes 
fit on there easily. If the basement were to get wet again, it would be super easy just to push all the water towards the drain because the floor is clean. There's nothing on it that's gonna get wrecked if it gets wet, and so that feels really good. And I will show you really quickly what we are keeping down there. So this is kind of my extra kitchen stuff. I don't like my kitchen cabinets to be overflowing, so stuff I don't use on a daily or weekly basis, I just keep down here, along with some stuff for entertaining. And then I have my bin of seasonal clothes and then winter stuff and then my staging bins. Down on the very bottom I have my sewing machine, a suitcase, and some extra winter boots. And then we also have uh, like an inflatable bouncy house that we set up for the kids in the winter. And then I have my grandma's milk glass and a space heater. And then our bins for Christmas and Easter. And then on the very top, we just have some area rugs that we use for staging. So it's still not a super nice basement, but it is organized. All right, so my biggest encouragement to you is to just get started. You don't have to do it like this and pull everything up. You can just take it in 15 minute chunks and I bet you'll be really amazed at how much you can get done in 15 minutes or once you get into it again, how then you stay working at it for a half hour or an hour. You get the ball rolling and you do create momentum. The other thing I wanna encourage you with is that it gets easier. So when we first start decluttering and simplifying, it can feel really hard to make these decisions. But as you do it more and more, we've talked about this before, it's kind of like muscles that we build up and it just becomes easier. I, I was pleasantly surprised that this process was a lot easier compared to other times in the past because I just realized now that having a simplified house is so much more valuable to me than any of the stuff in it. So I hope that helps. I'd love to know any tips that you have for tackling kind of intimidating or large spaces. Please share those down below or if you have a space in your house that's been intimidating you, leave that down below too because it's nice for us to know that we're not alone. But thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up is the best compliment that you can give us. I hope you subscribe so that we can keep in touch and I will look forward to visiting with you again soon. It was funny when I loaded up all this stuff and I brought it to the donation center and when I got there the guy said, oh, are you moving? And I was like, oh no, that makes me look really bad. You mean other people don't bring this much stuff in, right? <laughs>